Excel We People font charts enable you to build interesting variations on waffle, bar and column charts to name a few. They're great for visualizing demographic data, survey data and more. Now some of the techniques I'll show you use dynamic array functions which are available in Microsoft 365 and Excel 2021 but you don't have to use dynamic arrays to create these charts. Let's take a look. The free We People font, courtesy of ProPublica, consists of 20 different people silhouettes hand-drawn by Alberto Cairo. There's a link in the video description where you can download the font. Now you can see here the last six letters of the alphabet, U through Z, are a repeat of the letter E person, leaving us with 20 unique silhouettes. We can use the code function to convert these letters to numbers, enabling us to work with them in Excel. Here you can see that lowercase a is code 97 and z is 122. We can discard u through z and just use codes 97 through 116. Let's look at some examples. Here I want to visualize the Senate numbers in a waffle chart, highlighting the women by Democrats and Republicans. Now for those with Microsoft 365 or Excel 2021, we can use the rand array function. And we'll generate a list of 100 numbers starting at 97 and a maximum of 116 and I want integers returned so whole numbers. Let's press enter and we get a spilled array of 100 random numbers between 97 and 116 but we need letters so let's wrap that in the car function or character function close parentheses and now we have a random list of letters between A and T. However, I want a 10 by 10 grid, so I'm going to use the new wrap calls function. And we want to wrap after 10, and we'll pad with a blank. Not that we'll need to pad it, because it's going to be perfectly square. Press enter, and there I have a 10 by 10 grid of random letters between A and T. All I need to do now is apply the We People font. So let's scroll down to the bottom, and there they are there. Let's change the size, we'll make it 48 to fill the space and let's format it in a shade of grey so it's not so harsh. Now you'll notice every time I press F9 or if I edit a cell or enter another formula that we get a new set of random numbers and therefore a new set of random we people. If you don't want it to change all the time, all you need to do is copy them and paste them as values. Next I want to colour code the 17 Democrats blue and the 9 Republicans red and I can do that with conditional formatting. For this I need a formula that will number each cell and that I can use in the conditional formatting rule. I'm going to enter the formula here in the worksheet first so you can see what it returns and hopefully it will make more sense when I create the conditional format. Now I want the bottom left cell to be number 1 and the top right to be 100 and I can use the columns function to give me a column count. So we're going to absolute the first reference A and then through to A, close parentheses on columns, that's just going to give me one. But as I copy this formula across, it's going to increase by one. And then we're going to add 10 times the number of rows. So we're going to use the rows function, one through to absolute 10, close parentheses on rows, minus one, close parentheses on that part of the formula and I'll press enter and I get 91. And if we want to see how this is evaluating, we can evaluate each component. So this part returns one, rows returns 10, minus one is nine, times 10 is 90, plus one is 91. So that's how we get 91. And then when I copy it down and across, we get our grid of numbers 1 through to 100. So I'm going to use this formula in my conditional format. Let's just copy it, save writing it out again. I'm going to select my grid starting in the top left corner and it's important that you start in the top left because we're going to use a mixture of absolute and relative references. So that first cell that we've selected is really important. And then on the home tab, I'm going to go conditional formatting, new rule, and I want to use a formula and in here I'm going to paste in my formula that gives me the count and first of all I'm applying the red font so I want to check that the result of the grid number formula is less than or equal to 
both the Democrats plus the Republicans values. And I'm going to format this red. So in the font, I want the color to be red. I'm just going to pick this dark red. Click OK and OK again. Now we have the first 26 colored red, but I'm going to apply the next format and that's going to override the first 17. So with it still selected, I'm going to create another new rule, use a formula. Let's paste in the formula that numbers the cells. And this time I just need to check that it's less than or equal to the number of Democrats. Let's apply the format. This time it's going to be blue. Click OK and OK. And now we have 17 Democrats and nine Republicans. I've linked this to a data validation list so I can choose the next Congress, the 117th, and we get slightly different results. 16 Democrats and eight Republicans. We can toggle between the two. You can see the We People are also updating as well as the color-coded wheat people. Now, if you find the order of the colors isn't right, you can change it in the conditional formatting manage rules dialog box, select it and change the order. I'm going to leave it as is because it's working correctly here. Now I know conditional formatting can be a bit of a mind bender. So there's a link in the video description to my comprehensive video that explains how it works under the hood. We can also use we people to create bar charts. For example, if you have dynamic arrays, you can create a string of we people using the sequence function. So here I want to join together my text. I don't need any delimiter here. And I want to ignore empty cells, not that I'm going to have any. And then we need to wrap the formula in the car function so that we get letters. And then I'm going to use sequence to return 20 rows, no columns, we'll skip that. I want to start at 97 and it's going to step by one, which is the default. So I can skip that argument, close sequence, close car and close text join. And you'll see we get a string of letters. And all we need to do then is apply the We People font. Let's make them a bit bigger. So here I have 20 silhouettes in a single cell. Now I can modify sequence to return up to 26 characters, or I can create many more with the RAND array function, which is available in Microsoft 365 and Excel 2021 or later. Another option is to use RAND array with car to spill the wee people into separate cells. So starting with RAND array, I'm going to skip the first argument and then I want 10 results between 97 and 116 and I want integers. Close RAND array. So you can see it's given me numbers, but I want letters. So let's wrap it in car. And now I get an array of letters. All I need to do is apply the font. And make them a bit bigger. Let's center them so they fit in the cell. And we can also use conditional formatting here. So let me just copy these down. We'll do two more rows. Let's say I want to highlight the first 30% here, this one 50% and this one 70%. And let's change the colors of these so that they're not so harsh. So we'll give them a paler shade of green. And then I'm going to highlight 30% of them in a darker shade for the first row, 50% in a darker shade for the second and 70% in a darker shade for the third row. So on the home tab, conditional formatting, new rule, using a formula. So here I'm going to use the count a or count r function to count the number of characters. So I want C9 through to C9, but let's change the absolute referencing. So this one F4, so that only the column is absolute. And then this one here, not absolute at all. That way the conditional format will increment as it applies it to each cell in the selected range. So I'm checking whether the count is less than or equal to the value here. And again, I only want to absolute the column times 10. We're multiplying by 10 to bring the percentage in column B in line with the values returned by count. The supply format here, it's a font and we'll make it a shade of darker green. Click OK and OK again. And there we have a cool bar chart kind of effect using we people. Just like bar charts, we can create column charts. Again, we can use rand array and we just need to enter 
the number that we want in the rows instead of the columns like we looked at in the previous bar chart example. So we want 10 rows starting at 97 through to 116 and we want integers, close parentheses. So there I have 10 random numbers. Remember we need to wrap it in the car function and now we have our letters. Let's format them as we people and make them bigger to fill the space. We'll center them as well. Let me copy them across and let's make them a shade of gray as well so they're not so harsh. And just like before, we can conditionally format them. So let's say we want to color code 20%, 50% and 70%. Let's just center those values and we'll make them blue. And then let's apply the conditional formatting on the home tab, new rule, formula. And here we need to use the rows function. So we want rows one through absolute 10, close parentheses. And the reason we're using rows is because we want to number the cells one through 10 starting at the bottom. We're checking is it less than or equal to the value here and I need to change the absolute reference so that it's just on the row times 10. Let's apply the font format and we'll go with a dark shade of blue. Click OK and OK and there's our conditional formatting. So now we have a column chart effect using We People. We People are also great for visualizing survey data. So again using RAND array we can skip the rows. We're going to create an array of columns, which will generate a bar chart of we people. We're going to base it on the total number of responses in column F. And our minimum is 97, maximum 116. And we want integers returned. Close parentheses on rand array. Let's wrap it in the car function so that it converts it to letters, which we can then format in the we people font. I'm just going to copy that one down and select them all and we'll format it in the font right down at the bottom. Let's make them a bit bigger and we'll center them so that we can see them in the space. Now I'm not going to worry about changing the color here because I'm actually going to use conditional formatting to format them into students, lecturers and staff. So with them all selected, conditional formatting, new rule and we're going to use a formula and because this is a bar chart, I can use the count up function or count A, however you want to say it. So we're starting with this cell and we're going to use absolute referencing so that as the conditional formatting is copied across, it increments by one column at a time. Closing parentheses on count A. And I'm just going to copy that because I'm going to use this part of the formula in my other formats as well. And the first one is pink. So I want to check that the count is greater than the sum of the students and the lecturers. And again, let's F4 to fix the conditional formatting on the column. Let's go and apply the format. This is for the font and we want pink. Okay, and okay. And so now we can see the staff are highlighted. Let's go and repeat that for the lecturers using a formula and I'm just control V to paste in the one I copied from the previous format. And here we want purple. This is less than or equal to the sum of the students and the lecturers. And again, F4 to absolute the column only. Let's format it. This one is purple. Now this is going to apply it to all of the we people except for the pink ones. But we're going to override that with the next rule, which is for the students. So again, control V to paste in my first part of the formula. And here I just want to check that it's less than or equal to the number of students. F4 to lock it on the column format. And this one is this bright blue color. Click OK and OK again. And then we have our survey data visualized in We People. If we go into the conditional formatting, manage rules. You can see that what's happening is it's applying the pink format first, then the purple, and then the blue. So the blue is overriding the purple. So if you have problems with displaying the conditional formats in the correct order, you can rearrange the order using these up and down arrows here. 
I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.